Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another broadcast at Remnant International Church. Remnant International Church is a host is a church hosted by the prophetess Linda Dominique Grovner Holland and myself, Pastor Calvin Holland. We like to get outdoors from time to time, and this is another time where we get to come outside and share what God has blessed us with. So we just thank everyone for just watching and tuning in and being a part of what we're doing here in Remnant International Church. We always want to give thanks to God first and foremost, God our Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who without him, we wouldn't be. So we just thank him in this moment, just being out here in his midst, meeting us, being with us, <clears throat> being our supply, being everything that we need, God's goodness, his grace, his mercy. We just thank him this morning. We also want to thank everyone in Remnant International Church for tuning in, for subscribing, for sharing, for keeping us lifted up in prayers. For us, whether you're a sower, whether you're tithing into this ministry, we thank you in the name of Jesus for having a sermon to sow into a ministry like this, to pray for a ministry like this. We just pray that God would continually bless you and keep you and that you never want for anything. We just always want to lift up those that we're in combined services with, Overcomers in Christ group of churches, and Divine Breakthrough Empowerment Ministries. It's nothing like being able to share ministry with two other ministries. So we thank God for them. I also wanted to mention that recently I had been away. As most people have been watching and seeing and stuff, the prophetess had been doing sermons almost for a month straight. I haven't been gone for a month, but she had some words she needed to share with you folks, and then I was gone. I had the privilege of going to Nigeria and Africa to um, minister, to be a part of a group of men ministering in a church and getting a chance to see the country. God told me two years ago when the prophetess and myself were praying that you would be going to Africa. And I went to Africa and it was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. Overcomers Group of Churches has a ministry in Nigeria, Africa. And we went to share the message. We went because the topic and the theme was Greater Works. We did a Greater Works conference in Brooklyn. We did a greater, they did a Greater Works conference in New Jersey. And he did a Greater Works conference in Nigeria, Abakuta, Nigeria. And I was blessed to be a part of it. It was something that I remember for the rest of my life, being able to share and be in the midst with other people from Africa, our brothers and sisters. It didn't matter what they, where they came from or whatever and stuff. It was an experience that I'll never forget. So we just thank God for when we put him first, he puts us first. You can never imagine stepping into something like that. Like I've said numerous times before, there was never a, a season where I said that I wanted to be a pastor. But when you put God first and do what he's called you to do, he makes a way out of nowhere. There's things that you'll be doing for his kingdom that you never imagine that you'll be doing. And me going to Africa to be part of these men, these group of men to share ministry was an experience that I'll never forget. So we in Remnant just pray that everyone would put God first. It's about putting God first. It's all about him and his kingdom. That's why we come out here. It's not so that we can be seen and stuff. We're coming to share God's word. We're coming to share from our own experiences. We're coming to share to tell 
God's goodness, his grace, and his mercy, and how good he is. God is still working on everybody's behalf, and that's what we want you to get, to have that relationship with him, to build it, to be a part of his kingdom, to be blessed by him. He's looking to have that fellowship with you, and we're hoping that those that are watching, that through this ministry, you want to have a relationship with him, that you want to be a part of his kingdom, that you want to be welcomed into the family. So let's just welcome him in so that we can get started with this service. Father God, we just thank you. We worship you in your midst, Lord God. You alone are God, and there is no other, Lord God. Father, we just, God, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your son, Lord God. We thank you for life itself, Lord God, because all life comes and starts with you, Lord God. Father, you created us, Lord God, from the dirt, from the ground. Lord God, and made us who we are today, Lord God. You blew the breath of life into us, Lord God, and we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for you are a true and mighty God, Lord God. There is no other. I don't recognize, we don't recognize no small G's or anything. We only recognize God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we just thank you, Lord God. Father, we just invite you in, Lord God. We know that you reside within us, Lord God. Fill this place, Lord God. Fill your daughter with your spirit, Lord God. Fill her up, Lord God, to do what you have called her to do this morning, Lord God, to bless us with a message, Lord God. Father, we come against anything, Lord God, that's coming up against her, Lord God, that tries to hinder her from delivering this morning's message, Lord God. Father, we speak favor on her now, Lord God. Do to miss power, Lord God. Let nothing hinder her from doing what you have called her to do. We just thank you for her, Lord God. <coughs> Excuse me. For her wanting to do this, Lord God, and be a part of the kingdom, Lord God. We thank you for all her sacrifice, Lord God. We thank you for all her prayers, Lord God. We thank you for the prophecies, Lord God, that you release, Lord God. Through her, Lord God, we thank you that you kept her, Lord God, while I was away in Africa, Lord God, that she was never alone, Lord God, or wanting for anything, Lord God, except for me to come back, Lord God. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord God. Father, we just lift you up this morning, Lord God, just thankful for life itself, Lord God thankful for your son Jesus Christ and his saving grace, Lord God, who came back, Lord God, for a wretch like me, Lord God, who once was lost, Lord God, but now, thank God, through his goodness, his, your grace and your mercy, Lord God, we're found in about our father's business, Lord God. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We just welcome you in, Lord God. Have your way this morning, Lord God. You say, have your way this morning, Lord God. Have your way this morning, Lord God. Fill us up, Lord God. Fill her up, Lord God, to her cup overflows, Lord God, that it may glorify you, Lord God, with this word she's about to deliver, Lord God. Father, we pray that all distractions, Lord God, anyone coming to this channel, Lord God, whether they're going there directly, Lord God, or stumbling across it, Lord God, would be blessed by the messages, Lord God. Would go in and look at those other videos, Lord God, that have already been posted, Lord God. Would surrender, Lord God. Would make you a priority, Lord God. Would have no other God before you, Lord God. Father, help us, Lord God, to do what you have called us to do, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to help everyone, Lord God, that you set aside, Lord God, for us to help, Lord God. Father, we always ask that your will be done, Lord God. And everything we do, Lord God, we want to give you all the honor, all the glory, Lord God, and all the praise, Lord God. 
Again, we just thank you for this moment, Lord God, where we can come outside in your kingdom, Lord God, not be engulfed by no four walls, Lord God, but be able to share your word, Lord God, out in your kingdom, Lord God. Because you, Lord God, are truly God, and there is no other. We just thank you and praise you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome to Remnant International Church. We are thankful and grateful that you tuned in this morning. Now, as I move out of the way, ready yourself for the message from the prophetess, from the pastor, Linda Dominique Grosvenor Holland of Remnant International Church. I pray that there's no distractions, that you just take in the word, that there be nothing that hinder you from receiving the word that God has given her this morning. God bless you, family. We give God glory this morning. We give him praise and honor, honor that is due him. It's so great to be outdoors again today. You know, like Pastor Calvin said, the four walls, the four walls, okay but there's a world outside the four walls, right? Sometimes when you're teaching, sometimes when you're praying, you don't know who's listening or who's picking up snippets of what you're pouring out. So we're grateful to be able to do it. Father, we just say this morning, God, that we decrease and you increase in us, Father. Anyone who needs to hear this message, draw them to us. Anyone who needs prayer, draw them to us in the mighty name of Jesus. We are your servants. We are your servants, God. We just praise you this morning, God. And we just give you glory for everything that you're doing in, in our lives. Your keeping power, keeping us from last week to this week, God. I just honor you and give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So I'm thankful. My husband prayed, set the atmosphere, and now we're going to go into the Word. It's all about the Word of God, people. Amen. It's not just about going to church and leaving church and taking attendance, but it's about the Word, understanding it, and activating it in your life. So today's message is titled, Believe Again. Amen. Believe Again, right? So I can pose a question, who loves God this morning? Anybody love God this morning? Anybody thankful that they woke up today? Right. Can breathe and use their limbs, can talk? Amen. Yes, Pastor man. Calvin is, amen. So am I, right? Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for every opportunity that God gives me yeah. to pour out, to share, to do something, whether it's write a prophecy, release a prophecy, Lord, we just want to be obedient to what the Lord is saying. This is not about doing church the way we've always experienced it. He said we can go outside anytime we want. He said we can go anywhere, correction. He said we can go wherever. So that's what we're doing. We're taking the opportunity and the liberty to step out beyond the four walls, right? Which is so important because there's a world out there. A lot of times, and this is not saying anything against people who have buildings or any of that stuff, but sometimes when you go outside, it, it makes you realize that there's a world out there, that there are people out there beyond the choir members, beyond the people who sit in the pews that don't know Jesus. And we have to be available to them. We have to go where God is sending us or where he's leading us. That still small voice, that nudging, we have to be able to do that. Amen? Amen. 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 So, like I said, who loves God this morning? I love God. I gave my life to God at 16 years old, mm -hmm. right? Now, you may say 16, you know, a lot of people deem that not an age where you can make a decision like that, but I wasn't confused about it, right? I accepted invitation, an invitation from a Savior 
that had already been keeping me and my family. Amen. Right? Our entire lives, he's been keeping us, right? I knew that we were living in poverty and there were things we didn't have and we just made do, right? But through all of that, he let me know that we weren't keeping ourselves, that he was keeping us, right? Yeah. Okay, of course, I didn't get clarity about that until I turned 16 and started going to church and reading the word, right? But God is a keeper, right? Amen. But let me share something with you today, right? Giving my life to God didn't mean that I'd never go through anything. Mm. It didn't mean I wouldn't go through anything painful mm -hmm. or confusion mm -hmm. or confusing or that fear wouldn't try and enter the situation or any situation that was presented to me, right? So what do I mean by that? As believers, a lot of times we aren't always equipped to get through struggles, trials, and tribulations. We aren't equipped. People I grew up with weren't equipped, right? And why do I say we weren't equipped? Because when I was growing up, we had church services. But there was no real training, there was no real teaching, there was no real discipleship. We weren't taught we weren't taught when this happens, you need to do this. When you do when you pray this way, it's warfare prayers. When you pray this way, it's pra prayers of supplication. We weren't taught those things, right? And that's why here at Remnant, our goal is to disciple right? Because we don't want anyone to feel stuck or confused about God or his word and the part he plays in their lives. We don't want anybody to be confused about that. We don't want people to just say the sinner's prayer, but we want to help grow them up and strengthen them so they can walk on their own because that's what it's all about, right? We know what struggle is. We know that a little hardship in our lives can make it difficult for us to move forward, right? I mean, because truthfully, trials and things we go through don't always feel good. They don't always feel good, right? Even as a Christian. So, but what is tribulation? You've heard the word tribulation, but what is it? You know what a trial is, you know what a struggle is, but what is tribulation? Tribulation is defined as a grievous trouble, a severe trial or suffering and affliction, right? That's what tribulation is, right? Affliction is a state of pain, distress, grief, or misery, right? In a nutshell, it's when things aren't going right, but it's to the extreme, right? We live in a world where things aren't always going to go right. There are times that we can decree it, we can speak it, but there are some things that God himself allows us to grow, go through because it will grow us up, right? Amen. He allows us to go through it because it will teach us how to pray, Amen. right? And then get a prayer answered. It will teach us how to war and then get breakthrough on the thing that we are warring against. Amen. Also, because when we, what we overcome, we are now equipped and activated to teach, preach, and help other brothers and sisters in Christ overcome the two. So right. we go through it so we can bring other people through it too, Amen. right? That's what it's all about. So, you know, we don't live in a world or we don't serve a God that's just going to be, you know, rosy and, you know, good and just, well, he's always good, but he's not going to allow us to just walk this perfect line because there are things that he needs to fine tune in us and prayer and how we come against opposition is one of those things Amen. right so romans 12 and 12 says rejoice in hope be patient in tribulation be constant in prayer that's good 
And the, in a nutshell, that's exactly why tribulation comes, to teach us patience, to teach us to wait on God, to teach us to be constant in prayer so we're not just thinking, you know, oh, we're just going to get things our way just by, you know, throwing a tantrum. We're not here to throw tantrums. We're here to stand on the word of God and believe it until we see it. Amen. Not believe it just until the sermon on Sunday is over, but believe it until we see that thing cracking and disassembling itself in our life. Anything that rises up in our midst that is not of God, we have the authority to take down with power and fire. That's the authority of God living on the inside of us. And God wants to teach us. He needs to train us how to tackle everything that comes up against us that way, Amen. right? Amen. Sometimes we, we'll press in in prayer or we'll turn over our plate in fasting and in a day that thing will break. But sometimes it may be a week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it may be a, a month. Mm -hmm. But Romans 12, 12 says, be patient in tribulation and constant in prayer, Amen. right? We can't throw in the towel if after a day, uh, it hasn't disassembled itself mm -hmm. or removed itself, mm -hmm. right? God is teaching us and he's building up our strength and our stamina. The first thing you go, the first time you go through something, it might come against you. It might just be three days to take it down. And that's good. God is giving you the victory in that situation. But the next time you go through, it might be a week. God is building up your stamina. Can you stay in prayer? Can you press in in prayer? Can you decree what his words are? Can you believe it without wavering and faltering? That's what we must do as Christians, as disciples of Christ. It is necessary for us to not back down. Our first inclination should never be to back down, but it is to press forward and believe God without a doubt, right? Yeah. You might say, well, that's easy to say, hmm. right? I know we still have to press. I know we have to still pinpoint that love for God in our heart to get us to the other side, right? And we always have to pray, like I just said, because prayer is communication with God. And we can't ever sever that communication with the one who made us and keeps us. Amen. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Romans 8, 18 says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Right? Here's the, here's the message version. We always love that here. Mm -hmm. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a, ch a childlike, what's next, Papa? Mm -hmm. God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really are. We know who he is, and we know who we are, father and children. And we know we are going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance, right? We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him, right? It says, that's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times, right? The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. Everything in creation is being more or less held back. God, God reigns it in until both creation and all of the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious times ahead. Meanwhile, the joyful anticipation deepens. So we long for what's coming. We long for Jesus returning to be with us, to come for us. We're just thankful for that moment. And every day we should be pushing 
and growing closer in that anticipation of coming face to face with Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, Amen. coming face to face with Jesus, I just can't wait, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, after we've persevered and after we've overcome where we're going, that place that Jesus, well, he told his disciples, you know, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And we can't wait for that. That place is far better than any hardship we are experiencing in the here and now. I mean, it may seem rough what you're going through, right? It may seem like it's taking too long to overcome. I've been there and I know it, right? Waiting on payments, wondering if God is really going to come through. But we have to learn to encourage ourselves and believe again. There isn't always going to be someone there to encourage you and cheer you up. So you have to learn to just stand on his word and say, Jesus is coming soon. I can't wait for that moment when I'm face to face with the one who has heard my prayers, who has covered me in every situation. We have to keep pressing, right? Yeah. Sometimes there'll be no one around. Like I said, sometimes nobody will be around to even say it'll be okay. Sometimes there'll be no one around to tell you how to break through in your situation. Why? Because God has designated you, the encourager and the overcomer at the same time. Whatever you're going through today, sickness in your body, right? Unpaid bills, pending eviction. Maybe your marriage is iffy, right? Listen, when I say believe again, you may say, oh, well, I believe it, but I still don't see it, right? Or maybe you'll say, I've been believing it. Where is it at, right? But here's the thing. Trials, tribulations, and hardships, they can wear us down. That's what the enemy sends them for, to give us, to wear us down to the point we want to throw in the towel and give up, right? That's the fact. That's what he does. It can wear us down to the point where we stop coming to church, right? It can wear us down to the point that we still pray sometimes, right? But our prayers are lackluster and they lack power, right? But nobody can't say we aren't praying. We can still sing along with the words of the song, even though we may no longer believe a single word because what we're going through has been so rough. Those hardships can put a damper on your faith and water down your belief if you let it but we must push through Amen. we have to push through Amen. right as i was taking notes and sitting in god's presence just trying to listen for what he's saying to share today he gave me the analogy it's like a shoulder that's popped out of place right it's popped out of place, so it's pulling muscles, right? A bone rubbing against a bone it shouldn't be rubbing on. Um, and we feel the brokenness of the situation in that shoulder that's popped out. It hurts, and it's going to hurt even more trying to push it back into place. Mm -hmm. But once it's back into place, things will be better. Amen. The pain will ease Amen. and we will continue on in life as if that never happened. Mm -hmm. It's just like when the enemy comes with those trials mm -hmm. to sabotage our faith, our belief and our stability in Christ. We can't just let that happen. We can't just sit back and just take whatever the enemy is doing to us and, and let out a whimper, God, help. Yeah, we can call on God, but we must fight. We must fight. Why? Because the enemy doesn't just want your faith. He wants your entire walk with God. Mm -hmm. He starts with trying to take your faith. And once he steals faith, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. When he tackles your faith, or Shanda, when he wrestles your faith to the ground, he's coming for everything else. 
your belief, everything else, your prayer life, everything else, your worship time, he's coming for all of that. And we cannot let that happen. Amen. We cannot lose our zeal for Christ because things aren't going well. We must examine ourselves daily. And I know we keep telling you that here at Remnant, but it's time. We need to get in the mirror. We need to get into prayer. We need to say, God, where am I failing? Where am I lacking? Grow me up. Because that's all some of us need. You know, some of us are going through, oh, Rabbi Shendek, He's, we're going through things that God is just trying to get us to the level of adult, mature Christians, right? Amen. Only babies give their lives to God and expect to go skipping through the woods. God desires for you to grow up mm -hmm. in your faith, mm -hmm. right? So that you can in turn help someone else. Amen. You. you know, we can't allow the enemy to snatch our faith, our belief, our joy. I'm saying we because that goes for me too. Amen. So what am I saying today? <clears throat> what am I saying? I'm saying today that every prophecy God has given you, every scripture you've been meditating on, right? All the dreams God has given you. Sometimes in our dreams, he will release things and show us our future self doing things and experiencing things that we aren't doing right now, right? Every dream, every sticky note with a scripture that you might have posted on a wall or by your mirror, and all the words that God has spoken to you quietly in the stillness of the night, he wants you to know today that they are possible. God wants to give them to you. God desires to give them to you. It's not his will that we would lack for any good thing, but he wants us to walk in the abundant blessings that being an heir, a joint heir with Christ in salvation offers us, right? Amen. He wants those things to manifest in your life. He wants to increase your joy today. He wants to increase Amen. your belief in him today, right? Amen. He desires for you to walk in those things, but you have to believe again. Amen. You have to believe again, right? This is a warning for some, and it may be a confirmation for others, but you have to stop allowing things that happen in your life to pull you away from the possibilities of what God can do in your life. Amen. Let me just say that again. You have to stop allowing the things that happen in your life to pull you away from the possibilities of what God can do in your life. And even more so than he can do it, he wants to do it, right? Amen. He desires to do Thank it. You, Some of us fear change. Some of us fear Thank going you. through even. But you're going to stay stagnant and in a holding pattern if you don't let God process you through that thing, mm -hmm. right? Break fear off so that you are walking in freedom and liberty and the belief of what his word says, Amen. right? That What does that mean? That means when doubt comes to put out the fire of belief in your life, don't let it stay, Amen. right? Amen. Don't let it come and have a seat, warm a seat and say, okay, you can stay a while, right? Don't let it weigh you down and burden you and have you worried and tossing and turning at night, not able to rest peacefully. God promises us restful sleep, Amen. good rest. You, Rely on what the God says Amen. and rebuke Amen. what the enemy says. Amen. That's what we have to start Amen. doing, Amen. right? Amen. Don't let that doubt come and lie to you Amen. about God, maybe telling you he's not faithful or you always going through something. Why isn't anybody else going what you going through? No, trust God, <laughs> believe in faith and you will have what you say. 
Amen. Don't let the doubt that comes shift your thinking, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times when doubt comes, we're believing God for a thing, we're thankful, we're praying, we're decreeing, we may even be fasting, but then here comes doubt, right? And doubt is telling us, you're not going to get that. Man. They're not going to promote you. Man. That check is not going to come. Man. You're going to die. And the enemy is the evil one that wants to speak all these evil pronouncements over you. But we just cancel that today Amen. in Jesus' in name. Jesus you name. believe again. Grab a hold of this word with both hands and believe again. Amen. God, or Shanda, he needs you to have unshakable faith unshakable belief especially in this season let everything you go through make you Amen. let everything you go through make you Amen. oh rabba Shah. sounds like the birds even agree so Amen. we just thank god this morning for that <laughs> we are believers right we are the remnant right we Amen. don't back down we don't retreat we trust and rely on our heavenly father and we let everything we go through make us, Amen. right? Amen. I decree today that all of the unshakable faith in you is rising up in Jesus' name. Thank that God Jesus. is showing you how to be a warrior. He's giving you new weapons and devices. Thank Some you of you, oh, rabba shanda, rabba shende. Some of you, he's saying he's giving new tongues. Thank oh, rabba shanda. You're going to wonder, what am I saying out of my mouth? But God is giving you new tongues because he's increasing you. He's elevating you. He's breaking you through. And he's going to show you how to use Use these new weapons of warfare so when the enemy comes atarabashanda nothing that comes to try to come up against you has a chance right nothing that you are going through can plant a negative seed that will harvest one day nothing that's coming can even find you with where god is taking you in this season and if it does come it encounters your belief that is so strong that it does a U-turn. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. That is the message today. As you begin to believe again, as you believe to uh, to press into what the Lord is saying, grabbing a hold of what he wants to release you today, you are coming higher in Christ Jesus. You may say, well, I've been praying for my family for years and nothing happens. This is a new season. New weapons are being released to you. Believe again, pray again, and watch what he does in your family. You might be saying, well, my marriage is going through. Something happened and I'm not sure the trust is there anymore. The love is there anymore. Believe again and watch God sever anything trying to come against your marriage and increase you. I decrease longevity Amen. over your marriage this morning. That is your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Grab it with both hands. You might say, well, my children, they just doing whatever they want. They out there doing their own thing. They don't care about Jesus, even though I keep trying to tell them Jesus is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. Believe again, God is saying this morning. As you begin to believe again for your children, he will begin to cover them. He will begin to cover them even more because he's already covering them. But he will give them dreams. He will give them visions. That's the scripture. In the last days, it talks about dreaming dreams and seeing visions. And this is that season that we are in to see and hear what God is doing on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Maybe you yourself are weary. You're like, well, I don't even have a friend to lean on. I don't. You have a friend called Jesus. You have a friend called Jesus that will never betray you, never turn you, his back on you, never forsake you, and never leave you. If you have someone who is always there by your side, oh, don't settle for less than that. Amen. Amen. We have people that we like. We have people that, you know, are like family to us, and that's good. We should have family in the faith to encourage each other.
but there is no friend like Jesus. Yeah. We just give you glory today, God. We just praise your name, Father God. I just see this morning God releasing tongues like never before. That those who desire to walk in it and haven't walked in it yet, maybe you feel like, well, that's just mumbling. That doesn't make sense. God said, believe again and pray and receive by faith your gift of tongues. God wants to fill you up until you overflow. He wants to bathe you in his presence and his glory. He wants to take away every care and show that he is reliable and that you can trust on him. No weapon formed against you can prosper. None. None. Like I said, trials and tribulations will come. Things will try to come against you, but they won't prosper. And that is the key this morning. They will not prosper. Amen. So if you feel like things have been coming against you and getting the better of you, God has given you instructions this morning. And when he gives us instructions, we have to learn to receive them and move on them, right? You don't want God giving you instructions and you just go and take a nap or you just go and sit down and turn the TV on. You want to say, I hear you, Dad. Let me go to work on this. Let me begin praying. Show me how to new, use these new weapons you've released to me. Show me oh, how to break through in this situation and keep pressing. Just know that what you go through is to make you. And once you put on that mindset, you will be willing and able to use the tools that God has given you to get to the other side. Hallelujah. Amen. We're just grateful to God this morning. I'm grateful to, to God this morning because I can tell you for a fact, this word encouraged me. It ministered to me. So we thank you, God, for building us up, for putting us in a position to see what the enemy is after in our lives so that we can rest assured that he does not get that. He will not get our joy. He will not get our faith. He will not get our belief. Leaf, Father. He will never get our trust in you. We obey you. We surrender to you and we say have your way, yes, Father God. Yes. We pray even now over all of those who are watching, wherever they yes, are located, yes. Father God. We just pray right now, God, that you would gird them up, God, yes, that yes. you would pull them up out of the pit and that you would orabashanda, situate them in a way where they can start breaking whatever's holding them down and walk in the freedom and liberty that your word gives us. We thank you that your promises are thank yes you, and amen, Father. And we just continue to give you the glory. Bless those assigned to remnant. Bless those who are assigned and don't even realize that they're assigned. We pray that you would just speak to their spirits, Father, and tell them to come. Come and be discipled. Come and be encouraged. Come and be uplifted. Come and be a remnant so that you can overcome everything that's coming against you. We just thank you and praise you this morning, Lord. And we thank you for everyone watching and continuing to watch us no matter what, whether we're indoors or outdoors. Birds singing in the morning. We give you glory for that. I just thank you, God, and give you all the glory that is due you. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.